There's a lot of ways to dig through rock. You just saw a few of the machines that are built to move rock. Mining uses all of these machines and more. In this video, we'll explore the machines used in hard rock mining. There are a lot of things that can happen from the rock face to the processing plant, so let's get started. In a hard rock mine, the rocks that we dig through come from melted rock deep below the surface of the earth. Sometimes this molten rock called magma pushes up along the seam of the earth's crust. Along the way, valuable minerals and metals get mixed up into the hot liquids as they move upward toward the surface. After the liquids stop moving, everything cools down and the minerals and metals end up in the cracks and chambers that the hot magma and water float into. That's what a hard rock mining machine has to work with. The first machine that comes in contact with this hard rock is a drill. In a surface mine, a drill has one tall arm that sits straight up and down. Inside this arm is a long pipe with a drill bit on the end. The drill turns this pipe and then pushes it into the hard rock. The bit breaks loose pieces of rock at the bottom of the hole as the drill pushes down on the pipe. The pieces of rock are augered to the surface and pushed away from the hole. When the pipe is pushed in far enough, it gets pulled back out. The drill then moves to the next hole location and starts drilling again. The drill holes is where the explosives are poured into before an explosion breaks apart the rock and then it's hauled away. In an underground mine, a drill doesn't drill down. It drills up and sideways to open up tunnels and rooms in the rock. The underground drill has long, narrow arms that point in many directions. One jumbo drill has one, two, or three arms that can all drill at the same time. Again, each arm has a pipe with a bit on the end that the drill pushes into the rock and the rock is cracked loose by the bit and the rock pieces are pulled out of the hole. The jumbo drill has a hole pattern programmed into it. As each hole gets completed, that arm can move to the next hole in the pattern and start drilling again. Some of these drills are quite automated and are able to complete complex patterns with limited human supervision. Once the holes in an area are completed, they're filled with explosives and wired up, and then everyone is cleared out of the blast zone, and boom, the rock is broken apart so that it can be cleared away and the drilling can start all over again. So what hauls all this rock away? after the explosion. Let's go back to the above ground mine where these piles of broken rock can be massive and the machines are massive as well. In some locations, a big loader is used to scoop up the rock and then dump it into haul trucks. In big mines, the machine that often scoops up this rock is a huge excavator. One of the largest excavator is this one from Caterpillar which has a bucket capacity of 93.6 tons in one scoop of rock. That's about the same as a 200 passenger airplane. In comparison, one of the largest haul trucks is this one that can carry 450 tons of rock in one load. That's about the same as three average houses, including their concrete foundations. Wow. So why do we need trucks this big? Why not? Actually, some of the rocks that are cracked loose by the explosives can be over a ton in weight. So they need to be carried by a huge haul truck. Underground, the machines aren't quite as big because they need to squeeze into the small tunnels that are blasted through the rock. One of the largest loaders underground is this one. You can see how squished down it is to fit into the tunnels. In fact, the bucket is as tall as the machine and super deep. The volume of this bucket is over 11 cubic meters. That's the same capacity as 15 and a half average four person hot tubs. The haul truck looks a bit strange as well. 
Here's what a typical underground haul truck looks like. Notice how this one is all squished down like the loader that we saw a little while ago. Even with a low profile, it can still haul up to 38.3 cubic meters. To use um, a more common measurement, that's about the same as 27 average four-person hot tubs. So let's review. We have drills, explosions, loaders, haulers, and then crushers. What's a crusher? Remember I said these rocks can be over a ton in weight? There's no way a conveyor belt or a processing plant can work with that size of a rock. So it needs to be crushed. Crushes are almost the same, whether they're above ground or below ground. Here's a picture of one above ground. And here's a picture of one underground. Crushes are very tall, sometimes as high as a 15-story building. They're usually built into the side of a cliff so that the haul trucks can dump their loads from the top and the conveyor can start at the bottom and take the crushed rock to a processing plant. How does a crusher take these massive rocks and turn them into small rocks that can be hauled away by a conveyor? At the top is a huge funnel that's bigger than the size of a haul truck, about the size of a house. At the bottom of this funnel is what's called a gyrating crusher. It works like a coffee grinder, except a thousand times bigger and stronger. The huge grinder in the middle pushes the rocks against the outside of the funnel until it's cracked into smaller pieces. The large rocks move down the funnel until they're small enough to fall out the bottom. As the rocks gather underneath the crusher, they get fed evenly onto a conveyor belt that carries them to the processing plant or a storage pile. In underground mines, a big room is blasted into the rock and the crusher is transported into this big room one piece at a time, and then assembled into the tall structure we saw outside, except it's now inside and deep underground. The trucks or loaders dump the rock into the funnel at the top, and the even-sized rock comes out the bottom on a conveyor, and then the conveyor takes the rock to the surface. All of these machines, including the crusher, have apps on a screen that track all the different parts of the process. All these measurements are watched by operators. When one of the measurements looks like there might be trouble brewing, the operators adjust the parameters to get the measurements back to where they need to be. All the measurement sensors in the drills, loaders, haulers, and crushers generate data that gets sent to management systems, which puts it all together and then displays the information on operator screens. The whole operation acts like one big system that works together. Companies like the one I work for provide rugged communication equipment that makes sure that the data gets from each machine to the management software and then to the operator screens in a reliable way. For more information about this rugged data system, check out cisco.com slash go slash mining. Take care.